Hello and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm your County Commissioner Josh Kearns and today we're discussing some of the many ways to have fun in the sun brought to you by Spokane County this summer. To get us started, uh, we're going to be highlighting our fa a favorite summer activity of many of our Spokane County residents, visiting our Spokane County golf courses. To join us for this discussion, I'd like to introduce our first guest, Spokane County Parks Director, Doug Chase. Doug, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Good morning. <laughs> yes. Uh, lo looking back uh, at, at some of our past uh, episodes of Spotlight, it seems this has become uh, somewhat of a, a tradition yes. to have you join us <laughs> In the summer months to talk about um, all the great things that we have mm -hmm. to offer in Spokane County during the summer. So um, first, welcome back to the program and second, um, could you give us a, a little bit of an introduction to yourself uh, just to, to refresh our viewers memories about sure, you? Sure, uh, again Doug Chase. I have enjoyed being the Parks Director for Spokane County for just over 20 years which I can hardly believe because it <laughs> seems just like yesterday when I started. Uh, and and honestly, time flies when you're when you're having fun. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Doug, I think most people would agree you probably have the most fun job at Spokane County. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the time, yes, for sure. We we run into a few challenges here and there, but uh, I feel really fortunate, and and we have a great great team. Yes. Uh, could you could you tell us why did you decide to go into a career in? Parks and Recreation. Oh, gosh, you know, I think more than anything, I really enjoy uh, serving the community, helping people, and uh, working within parks. There is an endless amount of challenge. There's opportunities for creative thinking, um, interacting directly mm -hmm. with the public, um, and and identifying needs and being able to address those needs. And there's just nothing more rewarding than um, seeing the, the face light up uh, for kids and whether it's my kids or just children in the community when that new park is built, that new playground's up, um, or quite frankly adults when we have that new trailhead <laughs> finished and the new trails installed it's just it's so rewarding all right i really enjoy it yeah. well now let's uh let's swing into golf um, sure. <laughs> could you give us a, a little bit of a, an introduction to our three golf courses that yeah. spokane county manages and operates yeah spokane county is uh we're home to three uh championship 18 hole golf courses we have our Lataw creek golf course located in the south part of the county and Lataw Creek meanders, and I think there's seven different holes that mm -hmm. come into play with the creek. And then as we head out east, we have our Meadowood and Liberty Lake golf courses mm -hmm. out in the city of Liberty Lake. And uh, again, those are uh, a couple of phenomenal courses. In fact, Liberty Lake was completely renovated back in 2010 and is just phenomenal. Meadowood, of course, is a huge favorite link style golf course, uh, perfect for every ability from beginning to expert. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a chance to use every club in the bag between these three <laughs> courses and they just, they're in phenomenal shape. They're just great, great golf courses. They are, they're, they're, they're beautiful courses, very fun to play. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think I think you would agree one of the one of the most exciting things that, that we went through uh, with our golf courses recently was our rebranding campaign. Yes. So could you could you explain a, a little about the rebranding sure. process? Yeah, you we bet. Uh, we were we were fortunate. We were able to to bring on the assistance from the uh, professional firm of Clunt Hosmer, and they're just a, a fantastic group of folks, Rick and Darren and and Annie. And they came in and worked with our golf advisory committee and some of our uh, men's and women's club members uh, to carefully look into what the community uh, is looking for when they think of our golf courses. And we were able to, to take some almost cartoon style uh, logos <laughs> and such and, and come up with a new family of logos. Mm -hmm. And they just look outstanding and really exciting. Um, check them out on our website. We're still working on implementing them and will be throughout this year and into the fall as far as updating the signage at the courses. Um, but these new logos are, are they're just fantastic. And I think they 
really represent the county courses very well mm -hmm. and reflect the, the courses that we know today. So it's kind of fun to come into the 21st century and a <laughs> um, couple of these have, have been in place for 20, 20 plus years and so a lot of fun, a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. They're, they're beautiful new logos, and it, it was fascinating to hear the um, the sort of the the reasoning behind the colors <laughs> that were used, the imagery that was right, used for each right. individual golf course. I mean, a, a lot of thought yeah. went into to those those new logos. Yeah, v very professional to reflect the yeah. individual personality of each yeah. course. And That's right. It was it was really neat. There was a lot lot more that goes into that than one might think. <laughs> Uh, well, what, what would you say, what sets Spokane County apart? Like, what, what makes it such a golfing mecca? Oh, gosh, you know, we are so fortunate in our region. We're one of the few areas, I believe, in the country that has so many public golf courses within a half hour to a 45-minute drive of mm -hmm. the center of town that are all in fantastic shape, so well cared for. And the county courses, I again, I may be a little bit biased, and I am, <laughs> but they are hands down the, the best maintained public courses in this region. But we have a lot of good public courses. So uh, we're just really supported by the community and we're able with that support to continue to offer uh, those courses at a very competitive price mm -hmm. that everyone in the community can take advantage of. We have specials and and I think again it just this is a great place for golf in the Northwest. We're so fortunate. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, well we, we have set aside so, some time later uh, in our program to talk with mm -hmm. Sarah Fitzgerald about our aquatics facilities but what are some of the other uh, facilities and programming that Spokane County Parks and Recreation offers that the folks can enjoy this summer? Sure. Yeah, believe it or not, Spokane County Parks, Rec and Golf, we have over 15,000 acres of parklands within our mm -hmm. park system. So we have a lot of different, a lot of different activities to do. But this time of year, uh, camping at our Liberty Lake Regional Park Campground, very popular. Mm -hmm. We have tent sites, cabin rentals, and RV sites with hookups. And uh, all right there at the lake, a nice place to cool off. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's an eight and a half mile loop trail system, which is a little long for some. But the first couple miles of that from the campground up to the Cedars is actually about two miles and it's mostly shaded. And so this time of year, very popular. Uh, you, can, you can stay in the shade and it's just a beautiful environment. Couple other sites will promote to, to cool off. Our Bear Lake Regional Park, mm -hmm. our Fish Lake Regional Park, and our Pine River Park. Again, yeah. all very popular this time of year. Uh, where we have opportunities to, to step in the water and cool off if that's what you'd like to do, mm -hmm. um, hiking, uh, just a lot of different activities. So those are very popular this time of year. And then, of course, some of our conservation area properties, uh, McKenzie, uh, the McKenzie Trailhead up there near Newman Lake, again, has uh, some nice shaded areas this time of year, uh, the east side of our Antoine Peak. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot, of, a lot of fun and exciting things to do uh, in the summer, and those are a few. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, the question is, so what, what does the Chase family do? What, what's their favorite oh, thing goodness. to do? When you look at all the amenities oh, that, uh, that Spokane County has, What's, where does the Chase family go? You know, what, that, what, tell us the inside you know, scoop. That, that's a good one because, you know, I've, I've, I've had the, the privilege, the true privilege really to, to, uh, to watch my kids grow up as I've mm -hmm. worked within the system. So I would say if we were to step back five, six years, and my kids are now entering their senior year in high school, okay. my youngest, and so you would find us almost every weekend at uh, the South Side or North Side Family Aquatic Facility. Mm -hmm. And again, Sarah's gonna talk about those, yeah. so I don't wanna yeah. give it away. <laughs> uh, but that's been a huge family favorite, especially in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, more recently, you'll find us more in the conservation areas. So okay. uh, Stevens Creek Trailhead, yeah. um, Eiler Creek, the new Phillips Creek Trailhead, um, those are some some favorites that are are nearby for the chase family uh that we enjoy they're just really fantastic okay for sure 
<laughs> and how many times does Doug Chase get out on the golf course? You know, not and, nearly enough. And, and what's enough. your best score? Not, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, um, I don't routinely keep score unless I hit par on oh, okay. a ball. <laughs> I always make sure to write that down. So I think uh, uh, my best score, too, was uh, under 100. So... Um, I, uh, those, I would love to tell you that's a frequent uh, occasion, <laughs> but it's not as often as uh, I would like. But uh, really, I, I think of myself as more recreational golfer, just love to get out there. Uh, I just happy swinging the club, just being in the outdoors and, and just love it. All right. <laughs> love it for sure. <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're running short on time for this sure. first segment, but are there any, any final thoughts or any, anything you'd like to share sure. with our viewers? Sure. You know, just would like to encourage everyone with, with this heat wave we're enjoying. It's phenomenal for the pools, for the yeah. lake parks, but please be sure to hydrate. Um, yeah. Would encourage people to visit the parks early in the morning. And we do have uh, burn restrictions out throughout the park system. We want to, we have a lot of beautiful forested lands and we want to yeah. keep them beautiful. So uh, just encourage folks to um, be careful. And uh, when you're out, enjoying the parks in this heat, hydrate and have a phenomenal, great time. Have a great time. <laughs> All right. Well, Doug, thank you for being with yeah, us today. And you. really, thank you for everything you do for Spokane County. I mean, you you truly make this a better place to live. So th oh. thank you for everything you do for Spokane County and for our citizen. Joining us now is Sarah Fitzgerald, Spokane County Recreation Program Manager. Sarah, thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, uh, before we dive in and talk about our aquatics facilities, could you give us uh, a little introduction your, about yourself? <clears throat> Absolutely, I've been the Recreation Program Manager for Spokane County Parks Recreation and Golf for just a little more than two years. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was a Recreation Coordinator for the City of Wenatchee for about 11 years. So oh, okay. I've been um, pleased to be able to interact with the public in the recreation world for more than a decade now and I love it a lot. Fantastic. Uh, could you tell us what's the what's the day in the life of an aquatics director look like? <laughs> you know it's really hard to answer that question because no two days in my life feel the same at all which is actually part of why I love working in recreation. There is so much variety day to day. It's just as likely that you might find me sitting at my desk typing out emails or drafting a report for the commissioners as you might <laughs> find me in the back room at the pool house or doing an a run to URM to get cleaning supplies. So <laughs> I spend a lot of time trying to give my staff the tools they need at the sites to succeed and to make sure our community is safe and having a great time. And we do have about 60 to 70 uh, employees who work at our aquatic centers in the summer. So yeah. I really try to focus on making sure that our leaders at each facility are well equipped and ready to deal with each day. All right, that's so, so variety uh, <laughs> is definitely one way to explain it for, for sure. sure. <laughs> Uh, no, no we, we, we do have two aquatics facilities. Could you give us an overview of, yeah. of those two facilities? Absolutely. So we have the Southside Family Aquatic Facility on the South Hill, and we have the Northside Family Aquatic Facility up north of town in Colbert. So mm -hmm. we, they're lovingly known as Northside and Southside, <laughs> and they both offer similar programming throughout the summer. They're open on any given summer, about eight to 10 weeks each. And we have swimming lessons at both facilities, both in the mornings and the evenings. And then in the afternoons, we have public swim sessions where people and families can just come in and enjoy the facilities, the concessions, the features, and all of that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And at Northside, we also have the Northside Sailfish Swim Team, which Ooh. practices in the mornings and goes to various meets in our community throughout the summer. Okay, and yet you you mentioned features. Could you tell us what what are the, the the features that each of the the two facilities have? Yeah, for sure. So both facilities have some features that are somewhat similar, but mm -hmm. both sites are very unique as well. So our south side facility on the South Hill boasts a lazy river that's very popular. It has a zero depth entry area with a water playground that's very popular with the younger mm -hmm. ones. And we have the original old, well, it's not old, but our original green <laughs> slide, um, which does allow tubes. And it's about a 200 foot water slide. So that oh, wow. is one of the highlights of that facility. Mm -hmm. Kiddos do have to reach 48 inches before they can enjoy it. <laughs> but some of the new features that have been uh, 
installed since we were last open in 2019 include two new slides. One is open flume, one is closed flume. It's a little bit uh, shorter ride, but a little bit quicker ride than the old oh, okay. green slide. And you only have to be 44 inches tall to ride those. So we're really excited to be able to offer those new features that are open to younger children at that facility and families with younger kiddos. And then at Northside, it also has its own personality up there. Northside has our deep tank, so that is where our swim team practices. That deep mm -hmm. tank has a diving board and a drop slide. There is also the zero depth entry area at Northside with some different water features like mushrooms and sprays and buckets. And the new features there since 2019 are some things we're especially proud of. I believe perhaps Spokane's first heated recirculated splash pad is within mm. that facility, as well as two ginormous water slides that lead from a very tall tower. The red one is already getting a reputation for being very fast. <laughs> the blue one is slower, but quite a bit longer. So kids and adults alike are really enjoying those new features. And both of the facilities do have concession stands as well when you're enjoying the, the lounge chairs on the deck the deck to have a snack. All right, all right. Well, and I, I, can, uh, I, I can attest to the north side uh, yes, the red the red slide is very fast, uh, but I by no means what I call the blue side slide slow. It, it's <laughs> it, it still gets you going yes, pretty fast. Good point. <laughs> uh, well, you, you mentioned concessions, and uh, we we have a, a very exciting partnership with with concessions. Uh, yeah. could, could you explain explain uh, how concessions are working this year and how, how it differs from previous years? Yeah, absolutely. So both sites have been open a little longer than 10 years, and in mm -hmm. that 10 years, Spokane County recreation staff have operated and manage those two concession sites. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. You know, the last couple of summers, that was part of um, what I managed out at the aquatic facilities and um, always a, a joy to get to manage that piece of the facility. But there has been some plans in the works for some time, some consideration that it might be better to partner with a group who specializes in just that type of thing, who could really see that element really succeed and thrive. And so we did take advantage of the time we had over the last year um, with the closure last summer and everything else. We were able to go out to bid and develop a partnership with the Spokane Indians mm -hmm. and we're thrilled we've been working with them now I guess about a month or two and they've been a fantastic partner so mm -hmm. this summer at both facilities the concession stand is being operated by Spokane Indians concession staff so you can literally go to Southside or Northside pool and enjoy a ballpark hot dog so they've got <laughs> a lot of the classic favorites that our concession stand had before hot dogs mm -hmm. nachos you know candy that type of thing and they started with a minimal menu especially going into this season not knowing exactly what COVID restrictions and everything else would bring, but all words that I've heard so far are very positive. Um, they're just going gangbusters. So I really expect to see their menu continue to evolve and grow and to bring more and more to those facilities. So it's a really exciting partnership. All right, all right. Um, l last month, uh, I had the privilege of uh, attending and, and b being there with you at the, the ribbon cutting for the Northside Aquatics facility. And I mean, it, it just just a, a beautiful facility. The, the thing that really stuck out to me was just looking at each of those features and each of the the I mean the just I mean, when when we got there the, the the water was off on all the spray features and then it's a, as soon as you guys flip the switch I mean you just see the pool uh, you just see it come to life mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was just, it was just amazing to see uh, you know and, th and there were some kids there that got to got to take the the inaugural ride down the slides and just uh, just an incredible feature on the north side. Um, but it, as as you look back at, at the year that, that, that 2020 uh, brought us as, as far as our facilities, I mean, what, what were some of the highs and lows for you when 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 you can look back on those now? Yeah, it has been quite a dramatic ride for all of us, hasn't it? And uh, I would say the the most difficult part of 2020 for me was um, working with our team, the commissioners, my director, our team in aquatics, to really have to make that very difficult decision to not open the facilities mm -hmm. in 2020. That was a really painful season for all of us, you know, when the closures began. And especially for me, you know, I got into recreation because I want to give people access to recreational opportunities, to get them outside, mm -hmm. to make memories with their families, and to have fun. And and so that was an especially excruciating point in time, I think, for all of us in different ways. Um, and But I think that that made all the greater the experience this summer of finally getting these facilities reopened, not only after just the, the COVID closure, but also in their new expanded and enhanced forms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was definitely no small feat to complete those 
uh, construction expansions during COVID, as everyone knows, as uh, the challenges with shortages and everything else with reopening, it has been quite a ride. But uh, the the joy of seeing these facilities reopen after months and months of work is pretty indescribable. So yeah. when we were able to welcome people back in for swim lessons for the very first time, um, it was so thrilling to get to see those kiddos with smiles on their faces, you know, the first children to enjoy the splash pad. As you said, seeing the kiddos go down the slides yeah. at the ribbon cutting, our inaugural ride. Um, I was at Southside on opening day when we opened our first public swim session of the season. So mm -hmm. at 11 a.m., um, the first mom and her two kiddos came in and uh, I was very tempted to give the family a hug. I didn't go that far. I did request a photo. We got a photo of them, the first patrons that we've welcomed to a public swim session since August of 2019. So mm -hmm. it's hard for me to describe um, just seeing all of that work from countless individuals, from our landscape supervisor overseeing the construction projects to the tireless work of our, you know, our lifeguard managers and rounding up enough staff to get these places open this summer. It really does represent the culmination of so many people working very diligently behind the scenes to, to have this joyful and wonderful place open again for our community. That's great, that's great. Um, what, what, is your, what are your estimates as far as uh, how many people do you think are gonna come through our, our aquatics facilities? If I could guess that right on the money, that would be quite the miracle. This season has brought so many challenges, some that we predicted, some that we didn't. Um, in a typical summer, between our two sites, we welcome between 60 and 70,000 people through our gates in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and there's actually a possibility that even with all of the changes that COVID and the guidelines and all of the other challenges we face have brought us, there's actually a very reasonable expectation that we may reach that number again. We've modified our open swim sessions so that they're not as long as they used to be. It's a shorter swim session where it used to be a six, six and a half hour window of time when individuals could come and go as they please and access the public swim. We've shortened that into two separate three hour public swim sessions. So it is a shorter experience, although most don't usually choose to stay much longer than about three hours. We're finding that the public's really feeling like that that works out very well for yeah. them. What that does allow us to do, though, is have more people come through the facility within a single day. So even mm -hmm. though our numbers, you know, we're at a lower capacity, even though some of our swim lessons are at a lower capacity, we found creative ways to try to get as many people into the facility in, in safe and fun ways as possible. And so far, so good. We have really high attendance, and we're on track for a really, really great summer. That's fantastic. Wonderful. Um, from your perspective, what 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 makes Spokane County so unique as far as access to, to recreation activities? I think what is unique and fantastic about Spokane is the size of our community within such a beautiful and vast natural area. So not only are there so many varied outdoor recreation opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, um, from you drive 20 minutes this way and you're in the mountains, you drive 20 minutes the other way, you're in the desert, but then the Spokane urban area itself is so large that there's such a variety of man-made opportunities too. Even just within the aquatics world, there's yeah. really something for everybody. If you're interested in taking a, a cool dip in a pool this summer, there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, a lot of different organizations that offer um, pools and aquatics opportunities as well as the beautiful lakes and rivers. So I think the variety of the Spokane area in the recreation world is, is really, really special. All right. Um, well, you know, in, in our last few moments, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with, uh, with, with our viewers? Yes, I would love to just remind everyone that because of our operational shifts this summer, we do take reservations for our open swim sessions. That's mm -hmm. not something we had ever done before, but we had set up an operational model under an assumption that it would actually be required. We okay. find ourselves in a situation where they're not required, but we have this beautiful online system now built to take reservations, and we're taking advantage of that and finding that people really appreciate being able to buy their tickets ahead and mm -hmm. know that they're going to get into a public session. And so if you mm -hmm. would like to attend public swim, just go to spokanecounty.org slash swim and they can click on the date and the time they would like to visit and we have about 80 to 90 percent of our tickets for each session available ahead of time online but we do reserve you know 10 to 20 percent of those tickets for walk-ups as well so if okay. if reservations aren't for you feel free to show up at one of our facilities either at 11 a.m or at 2 30 p.m that's when mm -hmm. our two public swim sessions start but if you'd like to plan ahead then i would really encourage people to grab one of those reservations all right fantastic fantastic uh, you know and, and i just i I have to say thank you for, for everything you do. 
for, for this community. I mean, it's cer certainly during the, the little heat wave we're, we're having, uh, those aquatics facilities are, are a, a great way for folks to, to, to get out there and beat the heat. So Absolutely. Th thank you for everything you do for our community. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I would like to thank Doug and Sarah for being our guests today. Uh, we all hope that Spokane County residents will take advantage of the many opportunities we have to get outside and enjoy a beautiful summer. I hope we've inspired you to get out and enjoy what our region has to offer. As a reminder, a video of today's spotlight can be accessed on our Spokane County homepage and on our Spokane County YouTube channel. I'd also like to remind our audience that Spokane County has a newly designed mobile app, Spokane County On The Go. The app can be downloaded from, for Apple and Android devices. Just go to the, either of those uh, app stores and simply search Spokane County. No other registration or login is required. I'm your County Commissioner Josh Kearns, and thank you for joining us today on Spokane County Spotlight.